All right, Matthew, now we're sitting in a tug, right? Which is what you normally use to move airplanes. Exactly. We will move almost everything in here with this awesome little tug. How much horsepower does this put out, do you know? I have no clue whatsoever. But tell me about the plane behind us. It's an EA-6B Prowler. Okay. Um, it's actually our newest aircraft here. We got it a, uh, just about a year ago. Yeah. Um, it was flying against ISIS overseas, um, flew back to the George H.W. Bush aircraft carrier, came to Washington State, flew to Buckley, and then we literally towed it down 6th Avenue in the middle of the night. Wow, wow. Yeah, it was really cool. We had our own little parade. And how much does it weigh? Um, depending upon who you talk to, anywhere between 31 and 33,000 pounds. I'm probably guessing this guy's closer to 33 because it's still got everything in it. Um, now, we're not going to pick it up, right? So we're not actually going to pick right. up 33,000 pounds. Thank you. <laughs> but we are going <laughs> to help you today with this uh, job. And instead of the tug, we're going to use a pickup truck just uh, because we can. Hey, I'm all for letting the machine do the work. I don't care what the machine is. So yeah, let's, we got to move this thing back to where it was originally. So let's get cracking. Today, I got to tow and move a Prowler, a US Navy jet, military jet with real history. But I'm gonna bring this Ram 3500 into the hangar of the Wings of the Rockies Museum, Air and Space Museum in Denver, Colorado. So what kind of a plane is it? What is it used for typically? So the EA-6B is a, an electronic warfare aircraft and so its job isn't to bomb anybody or to fight other jets. Um, it's literally there to take out an enemy's air defense system, their radar, their communications, um, cell phone jamming. I mean, if it's an electronic thing, this guy will take care of it. Now, it does carry armament. It carries what's known as a harm missile, a high-speed anti-radiation missile. So if, say, we're, we're flying along and we locate a radar site that we want to take out, we can literally launch one of those harm missiles and it will home right in on that radar beam and boom, take out the site. Now, many of you have asked us about the hitches we use, and Genie Hitch is our new partner, and we chose this hitch for many reasons. Partially, because it's a heavy-duty hitch, this one is rated at 21,000 pounds towing and 3,000 pounds of tongue weight, and it can be a ball hitch or a pintle hitch, and this is solid steel, so it's strong. Now we're towing 33,000 pounds approximately today with this awesome jet. Um, this hitch is rated at 21,000, but we're moving it very short distance and they test these hitches to a lot more weight. That's the requirements by SAE. Hey Andre, I don't want to scare you, but there's a woman in a wheelchair back there. <laughs> Don't run over the woman wait. with the wheelchair with the prowler, okay? Okay, wait a minute. I'm towing a Navy jet in an active museum, and there's... Okay, this is gonna be a challenge. Yeah, yeah, so the most important thing, Andre, do not run over the woman in the wheelchair. I'm in two-wheel drive right now, on a smooth floor. So I, what I need to do is I need to pull forward, and then this is gonna be a real test off scale because I have two pivot points. I have one pivot point on the hitch and another pivot point on the actual steering gear of the airplane. So you want to cut it the opposite way? Okay. Because basically the way it's, you angle your truck, that's the way the plane's going to angle. Okay. Two pivots. Yeah. It's a little bit complex. Look at this. How many times are you going to see an airplane on the trailer hitch behind you. You know, it's like trying to do a 98 point turn or, or drive a triple trailer, you know, and these things have a mind of their own. So not only do you have, you know, the nose gear that steers, but then you've got your own steering up front and then of course you're, you're hooked into the truck. Um, so the guy helping right now in the, the hat there, Scott, he's like my guru with the tug. So he moves everything in the museum. 
Um, so you, you definitely make sure you want to know what you're doing before you do it because if you break something it's not like I can go down to you know Home Depot and grab an EA6B part. So Wings Over the Rockies Air and Space Museum is actually Denver's official air and actually Colorado's official air and space museum. Um, we have over 40 different aircraft. We've got some really rare aircraft in here. Um, we've got a B1A bomber which is only two of those are left. We've got one and then there's one at another museum. We've got a B-18 Bolo of which only five are left um, and probably our most popular exhibit is a three-quarter scale X-Wing fighter from Star Wars. <laughs> and how many of those are left? Uh, I think this is literally the only one, you know, after that attack on the Death Star. There wasn't a lot left. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm almost jackknifed here. Almost jackknifed. Uh -huh. Pull forward a little bit. Forward? Yeah. We're almost there. So how long would this job take you? Half an hour. Really? Yeah. Hey, keep your cut to the left. So I'm still doing okay. No, you're doing fine. I was worried. No, you're doing fine. Like we were talking about earlier, it's a uh, electronic warfare aircraft. So these jamming pods have an immense amount of power. So when they turn these things on, I mean, they're just sending out ions and who knows what out. So the gold color in that um, plexiglass is actually a layer of gold. And so what that does is it just shields the pilots from all that bad stuff that's killing cell phones and jamming radar and all that kind of stuff. This was flying with VAQ-134, the Garudas, and the Garudas were based in, uh, well, they were based off the coast of Afghanistan and Iran, or in Iraq, and so they were flying against ISIS at some point, um, and then went back to the George H.W. Bush, and then the Bush came home, and then this flew to Washington State, to Whidbey Island, where the Garudas are based. And then they flew it down to Buckley Air Force Base, which is only about six miles from here. And then we literally towed it down the road in the middle of the night behind a Peterbilt tractor. That was the hardest trailer backup job I've ever done with two pivot points, basically like towing two trailers, except it's not two trailers, it's a Prowler US Navy fighter jet. Hey Andre, you're sweating bullets my friend. Oh yeah. How do you do? You know, for the first time towing an EA-6B, I'd give him 7 out of 10. Now, how much is this plane worth? Do we want to tell him? Sure. 20 what? mil. What? <laughs> we didn't Wait, to I, I thought it was like a million dollars maybe. No, no, my brand. So if you guys want to come here and check out this museum yourself, go to, what's your website? www.wingsmuseum.org Or check out their Facebook page, Wings Museum. And as always, check out tfltruck.com for more news, views, and of course, heavy ass towing reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao. See ya. All right, I got to ask this. What's your favorite airplane in here? Uh, you know... I'm really partial actually to the EA-6B um, because it's got that been there, done that look, um, which actually it has been there and done that. So if we were to tow it out of here, right, instead of into its little parking space, could you actually like start it up and would it fly again? No. No, okay. That was one of the things that the Navy made sure that we couldn't do is that we couldn't take off in their multi-million dollar jet, which is a little bit disappointing. So but how, how do they uh, do that? Do they take the key away from you guys? <laughs> Well, if it's anything like what we've done before, they literally just break a stator blade in the engine. So if you look into the engine, you'll see that they're actually blades. And so what they, they've done on, in the past is they'll literally just take a very large metal rod and just kapow and break one of those blades off. So if you were able to start the engine, it would be off balance and it would literally just destroy itself.